that and I'm not trying to, you know, take any business from you or anything like that, but I do this kind of stuff up here on a smaller scale. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sean with Emerald Coast Digitizing. I convert tapes and films to digital here in Pensacola, Florida. If you need someone to do this for you, check out my website, EmeraldCoastDigitizing.com. Let's get on with the video. Today I am working on VHS-C tapes and a couple of VHS tapes for Drive Panasonic that we were looking at in our last video. Player that plays NTSC in other, mold, other formats, other regions. Going to take a look at the South pre-order today. Thanks so much for watching the last video with all these VCRs, trying them out. I actually sold one of them yesterday to a guy who was desperate. I don't really sell VCRs or tapes at the store, but I have had plenty of people ask me if I do. When the lease at this building ends, if I can find a nice location with a bigger lobby, then I will definitely set up a video rental store, a retro video place for people to come in and hang out. That's kind of what I really, really wanted to do with this store, but there's just not enough room in here. I'm gonna start doing comment shout outs on this. Randy Moyer 5351 says, most will be mode switches and some relubing if they sat for a while. That's not a hard fix at all. Talking about the last video, we tried out a bunch of old VCRs that I got for free. A lot of them had problems, then I just put red stickers on them and put them off to the side. A lot of comments in here that say that you could fix those and it probably wouldn't be that hard. Totally agree, I don't have time to do that right now, but maybe eventually. And I might give away a few of them too. I might do a giveaway on this channel and I'll give away some of the uh, VCRs if you guys want to fix them. Speakeasy Archives 8764 says that this was not a boring video at all. I appreciate that. I was saying that I thought maybe that video was going to be boring. Apparently it wasn't because it's got some of the best views out of any of my videos. Tookie Dookie 9477 literally went through and put a list out of every problem with each and every VCR in that last video and told me what needed to be done to fix it. Super cool. Thank you so much for, for doing that. I'll definitely reference that when it comes time to work on those. Like, subscribe, leave a comment below and it might show up in the next video. Usually I would label all of their tapes but they have excellent labels already on here. One, two, three, four, five, six and it goes all the way up to 28. Typically I would write them out on this if you watch my other videos. But when someone does something like this, it makes my job so much easier. Each and every one has a, a nice label with a date and then a number. So it makes it really easy for me to keep up with the media management at the end. So all we have to do to get started on this is rewind. As always, I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, it's been a long weekend. I actually had a dog show up in a storm outside of my house on Friday. I just happened to look out the door and see her she just looks so sad and so lost and she was old, she looked blind, she didn't hear very well and I took her in, cleaned her up and started looking for her owner. I really fell in love with the dog guys, I mean I only had her for a few days and then the owner finally got a hold of me. On Sunday I got an email from someone saying they saw a sign for the dog and got the phone number and called her and uh, I was able to reunite the dog with her owner which is super good. I didn't do a lot of video, but I did get a little bit of a video of her reuniting. <laughs> so this weekend was kind of stressful because of that dog. I just felt really bad. She was super old. I was afraid that someone maybe abandoned her. Thank I tried to get a hold of you online, then I was like, you know what? Maybe there's a sign out somewhere. So I went looking for the sign today. 10.30 at night, Friday, because it was yeah, storming. Yeah, yes, and she yes. was in the middle of the road. But man, I really did fall in love with that dog. It was, makes me miss my dog so much. My uh, dog passed away recently. But yeah, it was nice to have her around. It makes me really want to go get another dog. So I might end up fostering a dog here in the next few weeks. Have a little companion up here with us down the road. So we're just gonna do some quick rewinding and then we're gonna go ahead and get a few of these tapes started. I'm probably only gonna do a handful of tapes. It's starting to get kind of late in the day. It's been kind of a busy morning. So we're just gonna set up these first VCRs with our tapes here. And if you're new to this channel, I just want to say welcome, welcome to the channel. Thanks for subscribing. Um, a lot of this content is just me 
working day to day kind of vlog style. And really just a lot of multitasking and in workflow. If you do this yourself at home as a small business, then that's awesome. That's how I started. And then I just kind of scaled up and this is where I'm at now. So, my so over here I'm doing audio tapes and I just use QuickTime player and audio recording. And this computer here just happens to have a way of switching the audio jack into a sound input versus an output. Not all Macs will do this, but this particular MacBook does do that. Always a chance that they'll break on the rewind. And I just hate repairing audio tapes. I do have a few tapes in here that have screw screws so you can take it apart. So um, if something goes wrong with this, I can do that. So that didn't break, so we're good. So what we'll do is we'll press play, we'll press record, and we'll look at those audio levels there and we'll make an adjustment on our tape here and make sure our audio levels are good. And that's the, that crackling is the subwoofer on this computer being bad. So we got the audio tapes going in the background over there. Now we're all good to go on these, so we'll go ahead and get them started. And we are just using Elgato. And I know a lot of people may talk crap about Elgato. If you do this yourself and you have a small business, then that's awesome. I, I think that everyone has their own ways of doing this. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. But uh, for me, this works really well. And I would love to chat with you about why. And they do have a label on it. So we'll go ahead and type that label out for them. Slide in and see how it looks. And it doesn't look great. Sometimes the beginning of the tape just doesn't look good and then you have to, it kind of clears up. All right, so there it is. Now it's looking nice and clean. So we just know it's the beginning of the tape. A lot of time on these VHSC, the beginning of the tapes just, they just don't stand the test of time. We'll keep an eye on it and and if we need to do make some adjustments, we will. That's Elgato making it do that. So we'll start that over. There we go. On back to the beginning. Good. Hey, sorry about that. Yeah, you're all good to go. So that customer came back in and wanted more copies of their their videos done. And what I do there is I ask them if they've left a review or not. And if they haven't, then I usually just say, leave me, leave me a review and I'll give you this drive for free. And the customer wants to leave a good review. It's just they don't do it unless they give an incentive. So sometimes it's nice just to give them uh, a little bit of a, of a thank you for doing that. So that's my thank you. I also do that sometimes with one-off tapes. If someone brings in a tape, just one, then maybe I'll uh, tell them that, you know, if they go ahead and leave me a good review, I will not charge them for it. Sometimes. Let's see what we got. And I'm hoping for no problems with these tapes, but... The content seems to get quite boring without problems, but hopefully we won't have any problems and we can get into uh, working on the South Tree order and getting it ready for tomorrow. These are VHSC tapes, so I don't imagine that they're going to be super long. 30 minutes at most. So these will probably go pretty quick and we'll probably be able to add, uh, do another, another run of them and get this order done quite quick since we have so many computers. Trios. All right. Let's see what we got. Depends when you live in the project. 
All right. Looking good. Just moving right along. And all these things are coming out super clean. All right, one more tape to put down. I don't think I'm going to put any more tapes down. And while we're doing this, maybe that one. I really want to get started on the South Tree order. But, it, you know, it might make sense just to make it another video. What is the password? Here we go. I got this computer the other day. It came with stickers on it. So the way I get my computers is I just go to a... Uh, I don't want this. I go to a computer shop down the street and they sell me their kind of the stuff they probably wouldn't be able to sell to most people. And they come in with stickers and scratches and stuff like that on them, which is perfectly fine. They work fine for me. So instead of buying computers, I could probably buy like a clear click or like a cloner alliance or something like that. There's a bunch of different options out there for doing this without a computer. But man, it is, if I can get a computer for 150, I'd much rather buy that than a cloner alliance or a clear click. I'll just buy a computer for 150 and then buy a Elgato for like 65 bucks and I'll have another setup going. Just need a VCR at that point or a camera. And that's way more bang for buck, I'd say. I'd rather have this Apple MacBook Air with uh, eight gigabytes of RAM and an i5 processor with all the bells and whistles of a laptop over a clear click. But there are use cases for those kind of things that I think are pretty cool. Actually, I'm gonna make a video about the Cloner Alliance here soon. I've got one of those coming that I think is uh, gonna be super cool and it's gonna help me make use of my old broken cameras. All right, everything's coming through nice and clean. This one ended already, which is not what I was hoping. And there may have been just a cut out. There, there we go. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it's looking good now. And I do a quick video and I send it over to the customer. That way they know that I've gotten started on their, on their uh, videos and that they can expect it to be done shortly. All right, I got started on your VHSC tapes today. Everything's coming through nice and clear. Just gonna make sure everything plays right, keeping an eye on everything, and if there's any problems, I'll fix them. But so far, so good. Thank you for labeling everything. It makes it a lot easier on me. And uh, I'll let you know when I'm done. Oh, okay, what we got going on here? Oh, no, it fixed itself, not too bad. This one here is either blank or it's gonna pop back up. We'll just let it roll. Uh, sometimes I like to just eject, just to check, make sure everything's working right. You never know. I'm continue playing it. VHS tape has some tracking issues. So it looks like that tape might be all that's on there. So we'll stop and check. We're gonna check this one in a player with a counter. Dirty, so this is a good way to find out if there's footage. So it'll fast forward and if it sees any footage, it'll grab it and tell me how long it is. So we'll let that go through. And it seems as if it's blank after this first part. So it's just a short video. So this thing is definitely a blank tape here. So we're gonna pull it out. And we're gonna say our first tape is done. And they've got some great labels here. So when I go through and media manage, I'm just gonna go through and, and copy this on their, on their tapes as labels. Since that tape was so short, we'll go ahead and start another one. I don't think we're gonna get into the South Tree order today, guys, unfortunately. Um, I feel like these are gonna end soon, end quickly. And I'm just going to be constantly uh, changing tapes out. So I'm not going to have time to step away and, and work on the South Tree order. All right, so that's going good still. Our tape's still going, still got good audio levels. 
Okay, this one stopped here at 14. This one keeps stopping on me. I had to go in and trim out the uh, where it's stopping. I have to go take that one into final cut and trim out the blue at the at the end. With Elgato, you can trim the front and the end off, but you can't trim out anything in the middle. So that usually has to go into final cut prior to get that. At least that's how I do it. But we're looking pretty good. We can at least get this labeled out and look at everything. She doesn't have a ton of tapes, but they do have these red stickers on them. Um, your analog media has arrived with one of the following mold or broken tape housing, environmental damage, water, heat, etc. So unfortunately we were unable to convert it. She's got this on a few tapes. One, two, three, four. And this one here is actually broken. So that means they tried to play it and then they taped over the tape. I actually had pulled that out. So we got at least one here that we need to repair. This is definitely gonna be a video for tomorrow. So you gotta stay tuned. This one here. I actually think they did transfer that one. She sent me over the videos that they transferred for her. So we'll transfer them as well. And then we'll put those up side by side with uh, South Tree and see how much better of a job that we can do. There's some mold on here, not bad at all. But that is sticky shed or sticky tape syndrome mold there. So that could potentially rip the tape. So we're gonna have to hand unroll that. There's not even a sticker on this one. They just sent them back, so. This one here, we got some more mold that we're gonna have to address all this in the next video because there's just no time to do it in today's video. That one's pretty bad, pretty gross. The white balance on my GoPro is really weird right now. Super blue. All right, and this one here, I think this is one of the ones they actually copied. And it's definitely not looking to be in the best shape. This one's got mold on it too. This one's not too bad. So some of these don't look too bad. The VHS tapes definitely have mold growing on them. Not too bad, but I've seen way worse, so. I was happy to tell her that I'm, I'm definitely going to be able to copy these. There is an extra VHS clamshell in here that doesn't seem to belong. I definitely haven't pulled out any of her tapes, so I'm not sure why that's in here. But yeah, maybe there was a uh, something, I don't know to ask her about that. It's good to take a look at it and know what we're going to do in the next video. So stay tuned, like, and subscribe if you want to see how I clean and repair mold on 8mm and VHS tapes in our next video. And we're going to place our upgrade stickers here because we're upgrading to Emerald Coast Digitizing because your company doesn't, doesn't do great work. So I'll treat, stay away from this company if you can, guys. Legacy Box, Kodak Digitizing, apparently they're all the same company. But we'll put these back. I just don't have time. This is gone blue screen again. We're gonna have to figure out what's going on with this tape because it keeps stopping. And we're gonna have to recapture this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fast forward it. Something's telling the VCR to stop playing, and I'm assuming it's this tape being just a little bit sticky. So we're gonna send it through this rewinder and make sure everything's going okay with it. We'll actually go ahead and reset it too. We'll tap, tap, get things freed up a little bit better in there. Fast forward to the end, and then we'll rewind. Hey, it's ended, so we'll eject it. And this recorder is really loud when it ends. We'll flip it over, and on the same file, we're just gonna press play. 
watch for our audio levels. Let's give this VCR another shot. Power up. We're running into in the last video. And this is a PAL player and it was showing up black and white on the TV. And I was told in the comments that it should play on my capture card correctly. So we are hooked up. So let's press play and see what happens. Oh no. This player was working fine yesterday. Now it could be our tape. Our tape is messed up here, so. The mask really took a hit yesterday, guys. Press play. And it's ejecting it. What is going on? We were having no problems with this party yesterday. Let's see what our problem is. open this up now this player is definitely not in great shape there's lots of rust in here but it, it was playing yesterday so let's see what's happening okay it's this damn the damn auto head cleaner thing came off look at that all right now it should work this is an NTSC tape going into a PAL player that should be able to play in CSC tapes as well so ooh it's, it could be Elgato doing this let's see if we have an uh, adjustment here we can make for PAL it's coming through perfectly so this this player does work let's put in another tape that uh we can see normal colors on. All right, so let's try Crocodile Dundee. So the very, very beginning of the tape, so it's probably going to be previews. Oh, no, we got color. It looks a little off. I will say that the color looks a little off, guys. Last month, the sky in the Northern Territory was attacked by a crocodile. The thing bit his leg right off, left him there. Don't worry, I'm a New Yorker. It's looking okay. I don't know, but it does work with color, so it could just be Elgato. Oh God, it might not be made to handle that as well as we'd hope. But yeah, that's pretty cool, guys. Thanks for the info in the comments. I'm glad that this thing is not, uh, you know, trash. That's actually all of our tapes are actually ending because they're only 30 minutes long. And they're rewinding too, so. Go ahead and stop these and start new ones. They're only 30 minutes long and they just end so quickly. Yeah, by the time you're finished starting them, the ones at the beginning are 10 minutes away from ending. Shoshana can help you. Hey. I'm doing business in that, and I'm not trying to, you know, take any business from you or anything like that. But I do this kind of stuff up here on a smaller scale, you know, just per job. You know, I'm not an open business front. And I'm kind of curious, what is your, what is your pricing? Because I'm wondering if I'm charging way too, not enough, you know? I guess it's up to you. I mean, what you want to, what you want to price and what, you know, your expenses are. And I've been charging less than like the big companies like you were promoting in one of your videos about the iMovies <laughs> or iMemories or whatever. So I've been charging less than them and uh i'm just curious like if i'm even pricing myself right i don't charge per tape i kind of look at the project as a whole i can and then 
she tried to get mad at me and tell me she wanted a refund, you know, like four months later. And it's like, dude, you know, do you realize how much time I put into this project? Plus, you know, making you Blu-rays, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I got a couple, a couple of things of advice for you there. Um, don't take a client that won't pay your prices. And because if you take a, a, if you give someone a good deal, they're going to be the worst customer. I ran into that so many times uh, where like, you give them an excellent deal, you do great work, and then they still think that it should be less. And it's like, I already gave you a discount, no. And you know, that customer might give you a bad review, they might be problematic. So whenever you sniff that out in the beginning, if someone's trying to, to like, I don't know, what's the word, like kick tires, I guess, to yeah. try to find the lowest price, then you don't wanna work with that customer. Now, if you're hurting for money, and you're like, okay, well, I'll take anything I can get, okay, that's maybe that's, something you got to figure out on your own. But for me, like I won't, if a customer doesn't want to pay my, my prices, then they can just go somewhere else. Now that is hard mm -hmm. to say because sometimes you, you don't have any work and you're like, man, okay, I'll discount this person a lot just cause I need the money. Right. Or I just want to have some work. Right. And that's a, that's a slippery slope because then you, that customer isn't going to give you a good review. First off, that customer is not valuable to you. Yeah. You want someone who's going to want to pay full price and realize what you're doing and, and why they're paying it. Sometimes you have to have a good pitch too. You need to explain to them why they're paying for things because just like getting your car worked on, you know, people want explanations on what they're paying for. So you kind of just give them a good pitch of like, hey, you know, these, uh, these things are old. I know there's lots of companies out there that advertise low prices, but uh, to tell you the truth, they're really just trying to get you on like a payment plan for their cloud service and they're advertising low prices. But at the end of the day, you're probably not going to get all your tapes back done. Right. And what you're paying for is my time. You tell them, Hey, you know, you can easily go do this yourself. Go buy a couple players, go get this kid here. I'll show you everything you need to do. I'll teach you how to do it. Or right. you can not do that and just pay someone who's going to have to sit around and watch it and do it the way you would do it. So I don't know, you have to kind of sell yourself a little bit. You've got to make them understand what you're doing and why you're the better option. Um, and after right. doing that, if they don't want to spend the money, then that's something that you should just let them walk away from. You know, this is why you're paying for this. This is why it costs this much. And this is why it's different than these other companies. And if, you, if you'd like mm -hmm. for that, that you know that better service and that more thorough service then i'd love to work with you but if you're just looking for you know bargain bargains or you don't really care about this stuff that much then you know by all means try to find someone a little cheaper it might take a little longer to get it back and you might not get everything done right but if that's what you're okay with, with doing and that's where your budget's at then you know that's what you got to do but if you want to go through me yeah. i don't mind talking to you guys if i have time Especially if you're in the business, I think that we all kind of should work together to bring awareness to the big companies being not the great choice. And it's better to do, to deal with someone locally or someone with a small business that actually does the work themselves. There's lots of good options out there. If you look, look around and do your due diligence, you can find them. And those are the kind of people that I want to be friends with. People that do good work and, you know like the same stuff as me so i love talking to you guys the comments are the best place to get a hold of me but i will take a phone call from time to time but know that during business hours i typically i can't really talk while i'm on the uh doing the gopro videos and stuff like that so and also i just need to get work done i do have a lot of people who like pretend to be customers when they email me just to get like information on the business and you know kind of troll me to tell me that i'm not doing things the way that this should be done or the best way but i am doing things very efficiently and my product does come out very good very easy to use so i've had very happy customers and very fully transparent with how i do things so there's no surprises i'm not trying to sell people something that i'm not doing do things exactly the same way the customer would have to do it at home if they were going to do it themselves now there's other ways to do it you can get a little bit better quality if you go the extra mile 
but that is just not something that is uh, possible at the price point and with the amount of effort it goes into just having the tapes play the, the things that you can make easier for yourself is probably the best to go that route and using Elgato really makes things easy and the quality comes out really good most of these people aren't watching this stuff on big screens <laughs> like this isn't going to be put in a theater it's like the guy who you know pixel peeps his cameras and says oh 24 megapixels isn't enough you need 60 megapixels it's like only you and professionals are noticing the difference it's called pixel peeping <laughs> And I don't know what the equivalent phrase is for this, but uh, that pixel peeping isn't something I do. And that's customers not pixel peeping either. If you could make the SD footage look high definition, then you'd be able to charge a lot of money for that. I mean, that's, that's in the future. It's not here now. But eventually there will be ways to... Uh, to really, really enhance this stuff and on an affordable level. But uh, things you can do with images, like old photos, that you can use AI to really, really increase the quality of uh, something like that. But to do that over 30 frames per second, um, video files, they're three and a half hours long. That would just take forever, and it's just the technology is just not there yet. The software is not there yet, but it will be, and I can't wait because I will definitely set up four or five computers to run, render, run and render those kind of processes for people if they want to pay for it, and I will promote it too. This needs to be rewound. They're pretty close to the beginning, so I'll just rewind them. All right, let's see what we got. And all these things are coming out super clean. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe if this was valuable to you. Leave me a comment below. It really helps the, uh, the video get shown to more people. Shows engagement. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.